At this point, I'm not surprised by how quickly a concept is abused in Hollywood and levels up from a trope into cliché. This can happen so quickly the discussion can't keep up, but those aware know what it is while maybe not quite being able to put things into words. Especially when it comes to real-world messaging in film. Now, obviously, I ain't the first person to come up with this video topic, but I don't see as many as I thought having done so. So I'll enter the ring and help out. A simple guide to help identify this messaging in media is to ask if story and character are replaced by ideology and identity. Is the story about a group of people who overcome their differences and work together for a common goal? Or does the story hammer home a belief or ideas with an air of superiority that fits in the setting like a square peg in a round hole? Do the characters admit fault and grow as individuals by accepting responsibility? Or is someone raised on a pedestal still due to shallow reasons such as skin color or sexuality that becomes their identity. This is an easy way to identify a great many cliches in modern writing. Hence why in today's discussion about strong female characters, or simply the girl boss, perfectly exemplifies these questions as it emphasizes the female identity. Before we continue, let me be clear. This is a two-way street. If a male character falls under most or all of what I'm about to discuss, or the questions I just proposed, then they too are badly written. If Carol Danvers was replaced with a guy named Carl Danvers with no other changes, then Captain Marvel would still be a shit-tier character. Okay? Okay. Now, well-written characters, whether the humblest of victims to the mightiest of superheroes, transcend superficial details because they aspire to something better, something greater. Wonder Woman standing her ground in No Man's Land is not a good scene because she's a powerful girl boss standing up to toxic masculinity. No, this is a character doing something within her capability to give others the opportunity to win a battle against evil. If the scene played out slightly differently and Superman flew into No Man's Land to protect a wound wounded soldier while Chris Pine and his men snuck around to do what they do, the scene would be as good as it was with Wonder Woman because identity is not important compared to the actions of an individual. So not only is the replacement in favor of ideology and identity poor from the start, many pillars built upon this broken foundation are faulty as well. Take for example how selfish these girl bosses often are. Gyladriel from The Rings of Poopy. She acts as though she's the only character to suffer such loss with the death of her brother. Never mind entire families and bloodlines being lost in the war with Morgoth, they aren't as important as me. When Galadriel in name only leads the expedition to the frozen wastes and a party member collapses from exhaustion, she's ready to leave the dude behind since it impedes her desires, her goals. Once on Numenor, she demands an army from the Queen with nothing to offer. No treaties, land, knowledge, equipment, supplies, resources. Nothing. Good characters are not spoiled children. They do their part to help others in times of need, even if their role is no more important than those around them. Offering a hand to help others already puts you above most of the characters written today. I care more for these unnamed villagers because of the lives on the line a hell of a lot more than I do any of these stuck-up their own ass selfish characters who would sacrifice others to achieve their goals. Of course, their self-centered nature is due to how pompous they are. The elevation of their own suffering above others is equaled only to their own view of themselves. This was the straw that broke She-Hulk's back when Jen lashed out at Bruce, claiming she has better control of her anger than him because she's a woman in today's society. As we all know, she has to be careful because someone who accidentally looks in her direction after sneezing several blocks away inside of an apartment building is clearly looking to rape her. The superiority is best expressed when Bruce trains her, but she's better than him at everything and makes sure he knows it. The superiority is brought about from undeserved power and the skill to wield it. Part of what makes a character believable is the journey they go on and what they learn about themselves and their capabilities. When an individual can do what others can or better in less time with less training and without the often requisite suffering, this makes the character less deserving of their power less relatable or believable. It's the writers not wanting to put in the effort, hence why people like Plank Danvers are so divisive. 
she surpasses the most powerful characters in the MCU. Thanos could beat the Hulk in one-on-one -on -one combat with less effort than making your bed, but he needs a boost from the Power Stone to save him before Endgame was ended prematurely. 2x4 here wasn't stripped of her power, made immortal to learn a lesson about humility? No, she's a victim of the patriarchy that kept her weak in fear of her greatest power, making Chumbawamba proud. I get knocked down. And that's another link, forcing sympathy by making these characters perpetual victims. They are always oppressed because they are women, or the color of their skin, or their sexuality, or whatever. Again, Plywood, or Mulan, Naru, and Annette are all victims of some sort of oppression and written to come into direct conflict with others in the story to emphasize such. Mulan is a superhuman who can use chi, but she's not allowed because it would make other people uncomfortable. Naru is told she can't be a hunter because she's a woman and thus has a different set of duties in the tribe. Annette is a former slave who brings up the cost of freedom in an argument that has nothing to do with slavery. This attribute is forced, repeatedly and inorganically, as the characters and thus the writers claim to command your respect when in reality they demand our attention. Contrast this with Eowyn. She's not oppressed because she's a woman. In fact, her eagerness to help is endearing and recognized by those around her. Eowyn is kept away from battle because women are valuable. A man can knock up a hundred women, but out of a hundred men, only one can impregnate a woman. It is illogical for women to be men when we have clear differences, though in certain settings, like the present or future, this is often waived. And that's the final point I want to bring up, the absence of feminine themes. Motherhood, marriage, and even housekeeping are removed, being viewed as archaic and harmful. This erasure of feminine qualities results in the only logical step for modern writers, putting women in the position of men. This is often done for vapid reasons, such as glory and power fantasies, but without an underlying theme to solidify these biological traits, then all the power and skill in the world means nothing as they're just sex-swapped characters. If you take away Thor's character development, he's just a weaker version of Captain Marvel. Nauru wants to be accepted as a hunter, which makes her no different than her brother. Mulan's chi makes her better than everyone else in the movie without effort. This is why, at least up until they were ruined, Natasha and Wanda were far better than any girl boss in the last 15 years. Both wanted romance and families, but couldn't. The difference being, they were mature enough to acknowledge this fact and substituted what they could with those around them, with Bruce and Vision as their respective lovers, and the Avengers as their family. Again, until they were both ruined. Without these themes, ironically, the characters cultivate the negative traits these writers supposedly hate about toxic masculinity, including what I've already detailed. The girl boss is a hollow attempt at replacing men that simultaneously erases what makes women unique and does a disservice to all the actual strong female characters that came before them. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.